when you create your application, you have to create your application like this. Heavily armored soldier. But when you create your library, you have to program your library like this on the right hand side. Your library should crash as soon as possible. Also, your library should not catch the exception. The exception, if occurs, should be propagated to upper level. Once again, when you create your application, you have to handle every error code and every exceptions, like the heavily armored soldier on the left-hand side. When you create your library, however, your library should crash as soon as possible. When the input is wrong value, your library should crash such that the application developer can detect his error as soon as possible and fix it. If exception occurs in the library code, the exception should propagate to upper level such that application programmer can catch the exception. If you try to handle your error code in your library, your library becomes useless. Once again, if you handle all your error in your library, if you catch all exceptions in your library, your library becomes very heavy and very slow, and the client application cannot take advantage of the error message. Your library should crash if the input is incorrect. If exception occurs, the exception should be propagated to upper level such that the final application can handle the error in the upper level. Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Kim. Today is January 6, 2020. This is my PIPS episode about C++ GUI programming using Qt on Windows. In this episode, I will discuss memory resource management in Qt and modern C++ programming. I created this library in November 7, 2017, I filmed three videos and I implemented the complete library for memory leak detection. But I actually don't use this library much, but for demonstration purpose. The reason I don't use memory detection classes is that actually I don't leak memory resource. Not only memory resource, I don't leak resources in my C++ programming. That's why I don't need this class, but I wanted to help my audience learn how to detect memory leak. A very strange man, Mr. Kosh, Koshiji, sorry, I can't pronounce his name. He left a message like this. You are making these C++ guideline videos. However, your examples are exactly problems you are trying to solve. You try to prevent leaks. However, you complete ignore exception handling you should deal with. Ignoring error code is an even worse problem than resource leak. Over 90% of security vulnerabilities are caused by incorrectly dealing with error code based on CVE database in C++ style code base. That is exactly why I say Unique PTR itself is a problem. It does not promote good programming behavior. It makes interface worse. It is completely useless compared to custom written RAII class. PTW Unique PTR is nullable. Nullable is a mistake. He totally misunderstand what is Unique PTR. And I left it a message. He also talked about end line. Thomas Kim, also your programming style is terrible. STD end is harmful as well. So I checked out his YouTube and he made a video about STD format. He made a video about why std format is not going to solve problem. std format, you can refer to std formatting library. This library will be introduced in C++ 20 standard. Formatting library is a blessing. Formatting library is introduced to C++ 
to solve the problem of internationalization, localization. It does not need to be efficient. As long as this formatting library works correctly, it's okay, it's perfectly good. He does not understand the purpose of this formatting library will be introduced in C++ 20 standard. Once again, formatting library enables internationalization of C++ code or C++ user interface resource string. It does not need to be efficient or something. As long as it works correctly, it's perfect. I'm very sorry, Mr. Koshi, blah, blah, blah. I cannot pronounce your name, but you are totally misunderstanding the intention of C++ standard committee. I will read his message once again. It is very important. Understanding this is very important. You try to prevent leaks, however, you completely ignore exception handling you should deal with. Ignoring error code is an even worse problem than resource leak. Over 90% of security vulnerabilities are caused by incorrectly dealing with error code based on CB in C style C++ code base. He does not understand exception handling. You should not do exception handling in every part of your code. Once again, you should not deal exception handling in every part of your code. If you are creating application, you have to strictly deal with exception handling. But if you are creating library, you should not. Mr. Koshi, listen to me carefully. You should not do exception handling in your library. You should do exception handling in your application. You should let the exception propagate to upper level. Also, I will discuss this part. It makes interface worse. It's completely useless compared to custom written LAII class. Mr. Koshi, if you want to take advantage of LAII, you are creating your own class. How can you use LAII class paradigm in third-party tool? I would like to ask you, what's your mental state? How can you use LAII paradigm in third-party tool? Then he also say, unique PTL is nullable. Nullable is a mistake. Nullable is blessing. Unique PTL is nullable. That is blessing. When a viper drinks water, the viper produces venom. When the cow drinks water, the cow produces milk. Nullability is not the problem. The problem is not the unique PTR. The problem is not understanding unique PTR correctly. You completely ignore exception handling. You should deal with. You should ignore exception handling when you create your library. C++ standard library never handles exceptions. In C++ standard library, if you give wrong values as argument, C++ standard library crashes immediately, relentlessly. If you handle exceptions in your library, your library ends up like the heavily armored soldier on the left hand side. In such case, your library is very slow and inefficient and becomes useless. That's the philosophy of C and C++ language from the start, from the beginning. The more you put error handling code in your library, your library moves from the light on the right hand side to the heavy on the left hand side. If your library is heavy, then no application developer use your library. That's why we should not deal with exception handling in the library. If the input is wrong, your library should crash such that the application programmer can fix his error as soon as possible. It makes your library light like the soldier on right hand side. Also, your library is efficient. That's how C and C++ compiler and the standard library is implemented. 
let the client application developer handle the error, the exceptions. That's the C++ philosophy. Both C and C++ compiler was designed to crash when wrong input is given. I will give you one very simple example. If you try to divide integer, integral division by zero, your application is destined to crash. C++ standard committee, they are not idiots. They are experts. Why they allow such division by zero? Because if they put more error handling about such trivial things, C++ language become useless. The primary philosophy of C and C++ is efficiency. Let the end developer handle his error as soon as possible. Also, in my next episode, you will see ample examples about the usefulness of nullability of unique PTR. Nullability of unique PTR is not a curse. It was intentional design. If you want bulletproof programming language, then you have to move to other camps such as Java or C Sharp or Python, whatever. But C and C++ language is not designed as you are seeking for. Format library that will be introduced in C++ 20 standard is a blessing. It's to solve the problem of internationalization and localization. Try to understand the intentions of the standard committee. The C++ standard committee is not composed of one people or single body. In my next episode, you will see how vulnerability of unique PTR is useful. Don't miss my next video. Then you can make your own rebuttal video. For your reference, I created four films about unique PTR. You can click these links if you want to know how to use unique PTR correctly. Also, I filmed four videos about shared PTR. In this episode, how to implement the shared PTR and weak PTR, I implemented the shared PTR. This implementation does not need to be perfect, as long as it can help my audience understand the internals of shared PTR and the cost of using shared PTR. Shared PTR is improved in C++ 17 standard and also will be improved in C++ 20 standard. There is no such thing perfect function or perfect class. Everything has strong points and weak points. If you understand correctly, you can use it as intended. Understanding the intentions of the C++ committee is the key to be a successful C++ programmer. Thank you for watching.